Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton, and today we're going to talk about trigonometric functions of real numbers. So recall that a function is just a rule or correspondence that assigns each number, each input value, another real number or an output value. And there's exactly one output value for each input value. In this section, we're going to use the properties of the unit circle that we talked about in the previous video to define the six trigonometric functions. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to find the function values for the six trigonometric functions for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, or their equivalent angles in radians, pi divided by 6, pi divided by 4, and also pi divided by 3. And we're also going to identify the domain and range of trigonometric functions. So let's talk about the trigonometric functions. In the previous video, we talked about how to find a terminal point, p, which had an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, for any given real number, and t was defining the distance that we traveled counterclockwise if t was positive, or clockwise if t was negative, a distance of the absolute value of t along the unit circle where we started at the point 1, 0. So we start at the point 1, 0, we go counterclockwise if t was positive, and we go a distance of absolute value of t, and we end up at this point x, y, which was called a terminal point. If the t was negative, we actually went clockwise a distance of absolute value of t along the unit circle. We're going to now use the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of this terminal point that's defined by the value of t to define the six basic trigonometric functions. So for instance, we're going to define the sine function by assigning each real number t. So t determines the terminal point x, y. The sine function's output value, whenever we input t, the output value will be the y-coordinate of the terminal point x, y. The cosine function will be defined by the value of t. So if we input t into the cosine function, the cosine function's output value will be the x-coordinate of the terminal point p, x, y. p, x, y. And the other trigonometric functions, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are defined using the ratios of the coordinates for the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate from your terminal point. So the definition for trigonometric functions, if t is any real number, so that's representing the distance that we're traveling along the unit circle, whether t is positive counterclockwise or if t is negative clockwise along the unit circle, the point p, which is x, y, is the terminal point on the unit circle that's determined by this value of t, which is a real number. We're going to define the six trigonometric functions as follows using the terminal point, which has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Sine of t will be defined as the y-coordinate of your terminal point. The cosine function, evaluated at t is the x-coordinate for the terminal point. The tangent function, so tangent of t, is defined as the ratio of the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate, so y divided by x. The cosecant function of t is defined as the reciprocal of the sine function, so it's 1 divided by y, as long as the y-coordinate is not 0. The secant of t is defined as the reciprocal of cosine, so secant of t is the reciprocal of x, or 1 divided by x. So this secant function is defined only when the denominator is not zero, so x cannot be zero. And then the cotangent function evaluated at t is the reciprocal of the tangent function. So the reciprocal of y divided by x is x divided by y. So the cotangent function only makes sense if the y is not zero. Since the six trigonometric functions are defined in terms of the unit circle, the value for t that defines the determinal point x, y, the six trigonometric functions are sometimes called circular functions. So in example one, we're going to evaluate trigonometric functions based on the angles that we talked about in the previous video that are involving the unit circle in quadrant one. So find the six trigonometric functions for each of the following given real numbers t. So number one, the value for t that we're going to start off with is t equals pi divided by six, or this could be t equals 30 degrees. So this is in quadrant one. If you remember from the previous video, the terminal point that's defined using this value for t on the unit circle is the coordinates, square root three divided by two for the x coordinate, and one half for the y coordinate. Well, that tells us how to find out what are the six trigonometric function values now. The sine function evaluated at pi over six is the y coordinate, so it must be one half. So if sine of pi over six is one half. The cosine function evaluated at this value of t, cosine of pi divided by six is the x coordinate of your terminal point. So that would be square root three divided by two. So cosine of pi over six is square root three over two. The tangent function for the value of t, which is pi over six, would be tangent of pi over six, it's the ratio of y divided by x. So you take your y coordinate, one half, and then you divide by the x coordinate, root three divided by two, or you multiply by the reciprocal of your x coordinate. So one half times two divided by root three, which will simplify to be one divided by root three. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom of the fraction by root three, you'll have root three divided by three. That's the value of tangent of pi over six. Now the other three trigonometric functions, 
If you want to find out cosecant of t, which will be cosecant of pi over 6, it's the reciprocal of the sine function, or it's 1 divided by the y-coordinate. So 1 divided by the y-coordinate will be 1 divided by a half, or just 2. So secant of t. Secant of t would be secant of pi over 6. It's the reciprocal of the cosine function. So it is 1 divided by the x-coordinate. So 1 divided by the x-coordinate would be 1 divided by square root 3 divided by 2, or it would be the reciprocal. So it would be 2 divided by square root 3. And if you rationalize the denominator again by multiplying the top and bottom by square root 3 divided by square root 3, you'll have 2 square root 3 divided by 3 for the secant of pi over 6. And then the last of the six trigonometric functions, you have cotangent of t. So cotangent of pi over 6 is the reciprocal of the tangent function. So you'll have the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate for the cotangent function. So x-coordinate square root 3 divided by 2 divided by 1 half, that will give you square root 3. Or it's the reciprocal of the tangent function. So these are the six trigonometric function values for the value t equals pi over 6, which is also 30 degrees on the unit circle, which has this terminal point, square root 3 divided by 2 for the x-coordinate and 1 half for the y-coordinate. Number 2, another value that we talked about on the unit circle was for t equals pi over 4, or this would be 45 degrees. So again, this is in quadrant 1. So this t value determined the terminal point p, which was square root 2 divided by 2, for the x-coordinate and also square root 2 divided by 2 for the y-coordinate. So the sine function, sine of t, would be sine of pi over 4. It's defined as the y-coordinate of your terminal point. So that would be square root 2 divided by 2 for the sine function of pi over 4. Cosine of t, for the same reason, cosine of pi over 4 is the x-coordinate of your terminal point. So it will be the same. It will be square root 2 over 2. So tangent of t, which is tangent of pi over 4, it is the ratio of y divided by x. Since the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are exactly the same, the ratio of y divided by x will be 1. Cosecant of t, or cosecant of pi over 4, it's the reciprocal of the y-coordinate. So it will be 2 divided by square root 2. So 2 divided by square root 2, if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root 2 divided by square root 2, you'll find out that the value is 2 square root 2 over 2, and the 2's will cancel out the coefficients, and so it's just square root 2. So cosecant of pi over 4 is just square root of 2. And again, secant of t is the reciprocal of the cosine function at pi over 4, or is the reciprocal of your x-coordinate. So again, it's 2 divided by square root of 2, and if you rationalize the denominator, you'll get square root of 2. So secant of pi over 4 is the square root of 2. And then cotangent of t, or cotangent of pi over 4, would be the ratio of x divided by y. Well, again, the x and the y-coordinate are the same, so the ratio will just give you 1. So cotangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. So there are a couple other values for t that we talked about in the unit circle in quadrant 1. So number 3, t equals pi divided by 3, or this could be t equals 60 degrees. This is also in quadrant 1, and we had a terminal point p, which was the x-coordinate 1 half, and the y-coordinate was square root of 3 divided by 2 this time. So the six trigonometric functions would be this. Sine of t would be sine of pi over 3. The sine function is the output value is the y-coordinate, so the y value is square root of 3 divided by 2. So sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of t cosine of pi over 3, the cosine function's output value is the x-coordinate of your terminal point. So the x-coordinate was 1 half, so cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Tangent of t, or tangent of pi over 3, it's the ratio of the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So if you take the y-coordinate, square root 3 divided by 2, and you divide by 1 half, that's like multiplying by 2. So it's square root 3 divided by 2 times 2 divided by 1. The 2's will cancel out when you multiply, and you'll have square root of 3. So the tangent of pi over 3 is equal to square root of 3. Cosecant of t, or cosecant of pi over 3, is the reciprocal of the y-coordinate. So the reciprocal of the y-coordinate would be 2 divided by square root of 3. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root of 3 divided by square root of 3, you'll be 2 times square root of 3 in the numerator, and the denominator will just be 3, because that's square root of 3 times square root of 3. And so that's cosecant of pi over 3. It's 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. The secant function, secant of t, or secant of pi over 3, is the reciprocal of the x-coordinate. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So secant of pi over 3 is equal to 2. And then cotangent of t, or cotangent of pi over 3, is the reciprocal of the tangent function, or in other words, it's the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate. So the x-coordinate is the 1 half, divided by the y-coordinate, square root 3 divided by 2, will be 1 divided by square root 3, or if you rationalize the denominator, you'll have square root 3 divided by 3 for the cotangent of pi over 3. And then number 4, the quadrantal angle, you have t equals pi over 2, or that would be a 90 degree angle. This is a terminal point which was on the y-axis. You had a terminal point of 0, 1. So sine of t would be sine of pi over 2. 
The y coordinate is the output value for the sine function, so it's 1, so sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Cosine of t, or cosine of pi over 2, it's the x coordinate is the output value, so the x coordinate is 0, so cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Tangent of t, tangent of pi over 2 is the y divided by x. Well, that will give you 1 divided by 0. Well, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So tangent of pi over 2 does not have an output value. It's undefined. Cosecant of t, cosecant of pi over 2, is the reciprocal of the y coordinate. So it's 1 divided by y, or 1 divided by 1. So cosecant of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Secant of t, secant of pi over 2, it's the reciprocal of your x coordinate. 1 divided by x. Well, that would be 1 divided by 0. That means secant of pi over 2 is an undefined value. And then cotangent of t, cotangent of pi over 2, is the ratio x divided by y. So you take your x-coordinate, 0, and divide by the y-coordinate, 1. 0 divided by 1 is equal to 0. So cotangent of pi over 2 is equal to 0. So this is why the terminal points obtained from the value for t in the first quadrant was so important. You can define each of the six trigonometric functions using the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, or a ratio of the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So some special values for the trigonometric functions are listed in the table below. This table is very similar to the one that we obtained in the previous video using the definitions of the trigonometric functions. So the terminal points for the special angles in the first quadrant are extremely important since the six trigonometric functions are defined in terms of the x value, the y value, or both the x and the y value of your terminal point. So keep in mind, if t equals 0, the terminal point would be 1, 0, or 0 degrees. If it's pi over 6 for the value for t, or if t is equal to 30 degrees, the terminal point is square root 3 divided by 2 for the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is 1 half. If the t is equal to pi over 4, or if t is equal to 45 degrees, the terminal point is square root 2 divided by 2 for the x-coordinate, and square root 2 divided by 2 for the y-coordinate. If t is equal to pi over 3, or if t is equal to 60 degrees, the terminal point was the x-coordinate 1 half, and the y-coordinate was square root 3 divided by 2. And if t is equal to pi over 2, or if t is equal to 90 degrees, the x-coordinate is 0, and the y-coordinate is 1 for the terminal point. Each of these terminal points, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, determine the output value for your sine function, your cosine function, your tangent function, cosecant function, secant function, and cotangent function as follows. If t is in degrees, you have 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. These are the values for the first quadrant, or the equivalent values in radians. 0 radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, pi over 3 radians, and pi over 2 radians. These are the values of the sine function, cosine function, tangent function, cosecant function, secant function, and cotangent function. Notice that some of the trigonometric functions are undefined for the value of t, because you may have division by zero. So notice that cosecant is undefined and cotangent is undefined whenever t is equal to zero, because the y-coordinate is zero. And cosecant was 1 divided by y, and cotangent was x divided by y, using your x and y-coordinate from your terminal point. The other terminal point that involves a coordinate of 0 is whenever t is equal to pi over 2, or t equals 90 degrees. You have the x-coordinate is equal to 0 whenever t is equal to pi over 2. So tangent would be undefined whenever t is equal to pi over 2, and secant is undefined whenever t is equal to pi over 2, because tangent was the ratio of y divided by x, and your x-coordinate is 0 at pi over 2, and secant was the reciprocal of the cosine function, or it's 1 divided by x and your x-coordinate is again 0 whenever t is equal to pi over 2. So make sure that you know these values from the table for your sine function, cosine function, tangent function, cosecant function, secant function, and cotangent function for these very special angles that you obtain in the first quadrant of your unit circle. So keep in mind that some of the trigonometric functions actually fail to be defined for certain values of t, which means that we need to actually talk about the domain for each of the trigonometric functions. So two important functions that have the domain as the set of all real numbers are the sine function and the cosine function. The sine function is defined to be the y-coordinate. Well, there were no restrictions on the y-coordinate. So the domain is from negative infinity to infinity for the sine function. For the same reason, the cosine function is defined to be the x-coordinate of your terminal point. There's no division by zero possible with this function. So the cosine function's domain is also from negative infinity to infinity. However, if you want to find the domain of the tangent function or the secant function, Notice that the tangent function was defined to be the ratio of y divided by x using your terminal point, and also the secant function was defined to be 1 divided by x using the terminal point. We need to find out all the angles where the x-coordinate is 0 because we will have division by 0 for the tangent function and the secant function. In other words, we're going to find out what are the angles that correspond to the points 0, 1, the terminal point 0, 1, and also the terminal point 0, negative 1 because the x value is 0, or the x coordinate is 0, in these two places on the unit circle. So keep in mind, if you have 0, 1, that would be the terminal point 0, 1 that's defined whenever t is equal to pi over 2. And if you have the terminal point 0, negative 1, 
that would be the terminal point 0, negative 1 is defined as t is equal to 3 pi over 2. However, you can also have negative values for t, and also you can have multiples of t that are more than one revolution or one rotation of the inner circle. So terminal point 0, 1 could be any of these angles. It could be pi over 2, it could be 3 pi over 2, it could be 5 pi over 2, so that'd be one revolution of the unit circle, and then also pi over 2 extra. Or you can have 9 pi over 2, that'd be two revolutions of the unit circle, and then pi over 2 extra. Or you can also have negative 3 pi over 2, because that would be a clockwise direction rotation of 3 pi over 2, so that would end up at the same terminal point. Or you can go clockwise, one revolution, and then another 3 pi over 2, that would be negative 7 pi over 2, or a negative 11 pi over 2 would be two revolutions of the unit circle clockwise, and then you would also have negative 3 pi over 2 extra. Any of the angles that result in the terminal point of 0, 1 will result in the x coordinate being 0, and that means the tangent function and also the secant function would be undefined because the tangent function would give you 1 divided by 0, y divided by x from your terminal point, which is an undefined value, and the secant function, secant of t, would give you 1 divided by 0, 1 divided by x. And that's also undefined. So for any of these values, pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, or negative 3 pi over 2, negative 7 pi over 2, negative 11 pi over 2, or, or etc., the tangent function and the secant function is undefined. So now let's talk about the terminal point 0, comma, negative 1. 0, negative 1 is the terminal point when t equals 3 pi over 2, or any revolution around the inner circle once, twice, or etc., that also gives you a terminal point of 0, negative 1. So if t equals 3 pi over 2, that's one of the values for t that would give you this terminal point 0, comma, negative 1. Also 7 pi over 2, that would be a counterclockwise revolution one time, and then also 3 pi over 2 extra, more than one revolution or one rotation of the unit circle counterclockwise. 11 pi over 2 would be two revolutions of the unit circle, and then also 3 pi over 2. t equals negative pi over 2 would be a clockwise rotation of pi over 2. That would also be a terminal point 0, comma, negative 1. Or if t equals negative 5 pi over 2, or if t equals negative 9 pi over 2. If you went one revolution in the inner circle clockwise, and if you went another negative pi over 2, you'll end up at negative 5 pi over 2. And if you go two clockwise revolutions around the inner circle, and you go negative pi over 2, you'll end up at negative 9 pi over 2. Each of these values for t would also give you a terminal point 0, comma, negative 1. So that means the tangent function at these values would be tangent of t would be the y coordinate is negative 1 and the x coordinate is 0. So that's y divided by x for the tangent function, which would give you an undefined value. And again, the secant function of t would be 1 divided by x. Well, 1 divided by x would be 1 divided by 0, and that's also undefined. And so the secant function and the tangent function are also undefined for these values for t. So if you combine all these together for the terminal points for 0, 1 for all these values for t, and the terminal point 0, negative 1 for all these values of t, it looks like you are undefined for the tangent function and the secant function for values of t that are odd multiples of pi over 2. Because it looks like all the coefficients are odd. 1, 5, 9, negative 3, negative 7, negative 11, 3, 7, 11, negative 1, negative 5, negative 9. If you combine all those together, you get all the odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. Negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, negative 7, and so on. So the tangent function and the secant function are undefined whenever t is equal to, and this is how you write this, to write all odd multiples of pi over 2. It's k times pi divided by 2, where k is an odd integer. So that means the tangent function and the secant function are actually undefined for an infinite number of values for t. As long as t gives you a terminal point of 0, 1, or t gives you a terminal point of 0, negative 1, the tangent function and the secant function will be undefined. So to summarize, the domain of the tangent function and the domain of the secant function is a set of all real numbers except for odd multiples of pi over 2 or odd multiples of 90 degree angles. So now we're going to turn our attention to the other two trigonometric functions we haven't talked about yet, cotangent function and the cosecant function. So remember, the cotangent function was defined as the ratio x coordinate divided by the y coordinate from your terminal point, and the cosecant function was defined to be 1 divided by the y coordinate. So since y is in the denominator for the cotangent function and the cosecant function, we need to find all the angles where the y coordinate is equal to 0, because those values will actually result in an undefined output value for the cotangent function and a cosecant function. The special angles from the unit circle where the y coordinate is 0 correspond to the terminal points 1, 0, and also the terminal point negative 1, 0. So whenever the terminal point is 1, 0, you have all these different values for t. t could be equal to 0. You can also have t equals 2 pi. If you went one revolution of the unit circle counterclockwise, you end up at the same terminal point. Or two revolutions of the unit circle counterclockwise, that would be 4 pi. Or three revolutions of the unit circle, that would also give you 6 pi, would give you a terminal point of 1, 0, and so on. 
or if you went clockwise one revolution, that'd be negative two pi for the value for t, or two revolutions in a circle clockwise would be negative four pi, and etc. So that means for any of these t values, you'll end up at the terminal point one comma zero, which means that cotangent of t would be, it'd be the x coordinate divided by the y coordinate, well, the x-coordinate is 1 for this terminal point, but the y-coordinate is 0. So that means that the cotangent function will be undefined whenever you have these values for t. And also, the cosecant function evaluated at any of these values for t would give you 1 divided by 0 because that's 1 divided by the y-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is 0. So you'll have 1 divided by 0, which is an undefined value. So cosecant of t for any of these values would be undefined. Now let's look at the other terminal point. The other terminal point is negative 1 comma 0. That's whenever t is equal to pi. Or you can have t equals 3 pi. That would be one revolution in the inner circle and then another half turn counterclockwise. That'd be 3 pi. Or t equals 5 pi. That would be two revolutions in the inner circle counterclockwise and then pi extra. t is equal to 7 pi. You also have the same terminal point, which would be negative 1 comma 0. Or you can actually talk about the clockwise rotations. For these angles, that would give you a terminal point of negative 1 comma 0. You can have t is equal to negative pi. That would be a clockwise revolution or rotation, a half turn. So that would be negative pi. That would end up at the same terminal point. Or t is equal to negative 3 pi or negative 5 pi or negative 7 pi or etc. Any of these values for t will give you a terminal point at negative 1 comma 0 on the unit circle. And the y coordinate is 0. So that means cotangent of t would be the x coordinate, negative 1, divided by the y coordinate, which is 0. And that's an undefined value. So cotangent of t for any of these values for t would be undefined. And for the same reason, cosecant of t for any of these values for t would give you 1 divided by the y coordinate. That would make the y coordinate 0 in the denominator, which is also makes the cosecant function undefined. So if you consider all the t values for the terminal point 1 comma 0 and all the t values where the terminal point could be negative 1 comma 0, it looks like the cotangent function and the cosecant function will be undefined for the values of t that are multiples of pi, because it looks like 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, etc. Negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi, etc. So it looks like it's all the multiples of pi where cotangent and cosecant will be undefined. So undefined whenever t is equal to k times pi, where k is some integer. So again, this means the cotangent function and the cosecant function are undefined and an infinite number of possibilities for the t values that give you the terminal points 1 comma 0 or negative 1 comma 0. So to summarize, the domain of the cotangent function and the cosecant function is a set of all real numbers except for integer multiples of pi or integer multiples of 180 degrees. So the definition, the domains of the trigonometric functions, the domain for each of the trigonometric functions are as follows. The sine and the cosine function, the domain is the set of all real numbers. The tangent function and the secant function, the set of all real numbers except for the values where is pi over 2 plus n times pi, or in other words, odd multiples of pi over 2, where n is an integer. And the cotangent function and the cosecant function, the domain for these two functions is a set of all real numbers except for integer multiples of pi. So n times pi, where n is an integer. So let's finish up this video by talking about the range of the sine function and the cosine function. So the range of the sine function and the cosine function, you need to think about this in terms of the unit circle, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So from the unit circle, if we want to talk about the range of the sine function, the output value for the sine function are the y values because that's defined as the y-coordinate for your sine function from the terminal points. Well, your terminal points in terms of the y-coordinates range between negative 1 for your y-coordinate and 1 for your y-coordinate. So the sine function output values will be the y-coordinates, and the y-coordinates range between negative 1 and 1, including negative 1 for y value and also including 1 for a y value. So the range for the sine function is close brackets negative 1 to 1. So you have to be a little careful of how you understand the cosine function's range. The cosine function for the value for t was defined to be an output value for the x-coordinate from your terminal point. So the output value is the x-coordinate. So that means what are all the possibilities for your x-coordinate for the output value for cosine. Well, the x-coordinates range between negative one and also positive one on your unit circle. So the cosine function, the output values are ranging between negative one and one from the unit circle. So the cosine function's range is also the same thing. It's the close brackets, negative one to one, including negative one for an x value and also including one for an x value. So even though the range is typically the y values, we use y values because that's talking about output values. Well, the output value for the cosine function is x. So these are really output values, but they're x coordinates from your terminal points.
And keep in mind, the domain of the sine function and the cosine function is a set of all real numbers. So you can input any value for t for the sine function or your cosine function, but the range, the output values will be between negative 1 and 1 for the sine function and your cosine function because of the values of the unit circle. Range between negative 1 and 1 for your x coordinates and your y coordinates from your terminal points. So this is a good place to start our video. Now we talked about how to find the function values for the six trigonometric functions for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, or their equivalent angles and radians, pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. And we also talked about how to identify the domain and range of the trigonometric functions. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about values of the trigonometric functions.